What is durability hint in Jenkins? Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.387.2. I also have a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Now the title says it all. What is durability hint? Durability hint is an option that we can use within pipeline. So let's go take a look at the option for durability hint. So I've got pipeline syntax open. I'm going to click on declarative directive generator and under sample directive, I'm going to select options. And then from the drop down right here, I'm going to select durability hint. And what we can see here is it says it's for pipeline speed and durability override. Well, let's take a look at the help for this. This setting allows users to change the default durability mode for running pipelines. And the reason why this was created was for this next sentence. In most cases, this is a trade-off between performance and the ability for running pipelines to resume after unplanned Jenkins outages. Now, whether that was an unplanned Jenkins outage or even a planned Jenkins outage that was executed just a little bit too early, the effect is the same. Prior to durability hint being introduced, what happened is every running pipeline wrote data constantly so they could resume even after Jenkins fails or was restarted. This setting gives the user the ability to adjust this right behavior. This behavior is considered to be maximum survivability. So if we were to go down into our generation, and let's turn this on, we can see that we have three options here. We have maximum durability. This was previously the only option. This was the default when pipelines first started. We also have less durability, a bit faster, but note that that's only for specialty use cases only. In real life, I've never even used this option. This top option, performance optimized, is usually where I start. It's much faster, but in order for a pipeline to resume from where it was going, it would require a clean shutdown of the Jenkins controller in order for everything to be flushed out prior to the controller being shut down. So let's take a look at what the maximum durability looks like. We'll click on generate declarative directive. And what you'll see here is we get a durability hint of max survivability. That max survivability maps back to maximum durability. If I switch this to performance optimized and click on the button, I now get a durability hint of performance underscore optimized. So with this in mind, let's go over and take a look at the sample repository. Now you'll notice that I have a main branch, but nothing's on the main branch. That's because I have three different branches set up. I have max, perf, and none. So if I was to take a look at the none branch and click into Jenkins file, what we'll see here is there are no options set. If I go over to max, what we'll see is we see the durability hint of max survivability. And finally, if we go take a look at perf, we'll see that the perf Jenkins file has performance optimized for durability hint. If we go back over to our controller, we can take a look at the multi-branch job that I've already set up for this, and we can see jobs that are mapped back to each of those branches. If I click into none and look at the build history for this number one, we can see that it's printing out, because I've set it up this way, to echo out none. But notice there's no way for me to know here exactly what mode that I'm running in. In order for us to be able to see that, we need to first set up a logger. Now this logger is inside of the workflow job plugin. And what we'll need to do is set up a logger to a fine setting so that we can see for this logger running in durability level. We want to see what mode it's actually running in. So let's go back over to our controller and let's set up a logger for this so we can see what's going on. We'll go down into Manage Jenkins, and then we go into System Log, and let's add a new log recorder. I'm going to give it the name of the full package and the class that I'm in, because this is the way I normally name my loggers. That way it's easier to find which ones I'm looking for. So I'm naming it Org Jenkins CI Plugins Workflow Job Workflow Run. Now in case you're questioning, okay, where did that come from? If we go back up to the top of this plugin file that we're looking at, we can see here that it's in the workflow job package, but I also need to go ahead and include the class name, which in this case is workflow run. So we'll go back over here. I'm just gonna create this, and then I want to add a logger. This goes back to the reason why I was talking about how I name my loggers. Since this case is for a specific use case, I'm creating a specific logger. So I'm okay mapping my logger back to my name. If I was creating a more generalized logger, then I would give it a more generalized name and then I would have multiple loggers defined underneath that name. But in this case, since I'm doing a one-for-one, one, this is okay. So I define the logger 
and I want to go ahead, I could set it to all, but that would be a lot of noise. I just want to do fine, because if we go back over and look for our line number, which in this case, I believe was 321, at least at the time of recording, yes, we're just doing a logger fine. So I'm okay just selecting fine. So let's go ahead and click on save. Now let's go back over to our job. We'll go back into durability hint and let's run none. So if we click on build now, once job number two completes, what we'll do is we'll go back over and take a look at that logger. So the job is completed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab just so it's easier to see the log. So I'll go over my hover here. We'll go to manage Jenkins. We'll go down to system log and I'll go ahead and right click and open in a new tab. So now we see the listing for workflow run. I'll click into that. And what we can see here is now we're running in durability level max survivability. But remember with none, we didn't define any kind of durability hint. So where does this come from? Well, in this case, where this comes from is from our default settings for the whole system. So if we go back into Manage Jenkins, I'll go to Configure System. I'll open this in a new tab. If we go ahead and take a look at this, we'll go down to the section that's called Pipeline Speed and Durability. And you can see here that the default is set to none, which is use the pipeline default, which is max survivability. Now, unlike what we saw over in Pipeline Syntax, if we click on this dropdown, we actually see four items. Well, the reason why we see four items is the none and the maximum durability are exactly the same. Now, it's a little confusing, but trust me, those are exactly the same. We see our less durability. This was in the exact same location. And then we see performance optimized. Since we have the none set, none means max survivability. That's the reason why in the log, we see max survivability here. Now let's go back over into our controller. Let's go to our perf job. Let's run our perf job. And as it finishes up with number two, let's go back over to our log. Let's refresh this page. And now we'll see that we were running in performance optimized. One more time, let's go back over into durability hint. We'll click on max. We'll do build now. And if we take a look at the output for two, we'll go back to the log, refresh here. We'll now see max survivability. Now, again, the trade-off with max survivability and performance optimized is the amount of file writes that are happening to the controller disk. What you may want to do is set your global default to performance optimized. That way you're minimizing the amount of disk hits that you're taking when you're running pipeline and then only override and use max survivability in the cases where you need that extra durability. This is a recommendation that I typically make. So let's go back over to our controller into configure system. Let's change this to performance optimized as our default. So let's go ahead and click on save and go back over to durability hint. And since we know that perf does performance optimized, we'll skip that one this time, but let's go to none. And if we go ahead and run none, what we're going to see once this completes is we'll go back over to log and notice at the bottom when we do the refresh, we now see performance optimized when we ran none. When we first ran the none job, it was max survivability. But now because we've set the global default to performance optimized, now we see performance optimized. But just to prove out that max survivability still works, let's go back over into our max pipeline and let's run max pipeline one more time. Now that's completed. Let's go back over to log. Let's refresh this, scroll to the bottom, and we'll see now that the max pipeline is still showing as max survivability. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.